Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. Um, this time I'm going to show you a different demo environment than in the other videos, which were much more Red Hat JBoss centric. This time we will take a look at our platform as a service product, OpenShift, and in combination with Jenkins as a CI CD server, I will give you a slight introduction and a glimpse on what can be done in the field of continuous delivery. So taking a little bit of uh, theoretical background, how do we usually see customers embracing OpenShift for a topic like continuous integration, continuous delivery, or even just separation of environments? So for one, we will see customers that have a larger OpenShift installation where there are different nodes which are separated in uh, districts. So there's a district for development, maybe one for Q&A, and one for production. And the nodes that uh, build these districts could have different uh, distinct features, being compute power or resources available. So whatever you think uh, could be a good differentiator between those environments. So that's one scenario. Another scenario could very well be the separation of uh, the environments in different OpenShift environments, like in this picture where you have one OpenShift environment with uh, districts for development and QA and a totally separate OpenShift environment for your production purposes. So all those is possible and there obviously are many other ways how you can achieve the same results as well. For the demo scenario, we will go a little bit more simpler. So what I've done is I have an OpenShift Enterprise version 2.1 running in a virtual machine. And uh, in this OpenShift environment, I obviously only have one compute node. And this compute node I just introduced three different domains associated to my user that I'm using. But the procedure and the technology that we are going to look at can be applied on whatever way you use OpenShift or in a combination of OpenShift with um, non-pass environments. So what is going to happen? Um, we have a workstation where we have our code that we develop. Once a certain development stage is reached, we will push the changed code to uh, GitHub. From GitHub, there are hooks that trigger Jenkins, who runs for me in a different uh, virtual server. And Jenkins then will do various stages. So in stage one, he will um, clone the repository from GitHub onto the local system. He will run code quality checks, in my case using Sonar, and he will build a WAR file for later deployment when the quality checks uh, were successful. So when this is done, a second uh, step will be initiated, which will deploy the previously created WAR in the function verification test domain on OpenShift. And he will do a very, very simple smoke test just by starting the application and checking if it is there or not. So if this stage succeeds, Jenkins will retake the same WAR file and will deploy it on a domain which is uh, responsible or providing services for the user acceptance tests. Obviously here we don't want any automatic um, promotion of activities, but uh, we want to wait until someone who is responsible for user acceptance testing um, it decides that uh, the code is okay, that uh, the product is doing what we want, and that he can manually initiate the last step, which is the deployment of our code on the production 
domain of OpenShift and some cleanup for resource uh, takeability because when our code is uh, validated and running in production we don't need it again on the function verification or user acceptance domain. So this is what we are going to look at in uh, the real running environment. So let's take a look at the environment. We have OpenShift running here and as you can see there is an application called TicketMonster running in the domain which is named prod. The TicketMonster runs on Java CAP version 6. And let's take a look at the TicketMonster application. We'll open it in a new tab. We go on TicketMonster and uh, for the beginning it looks good, but hold on. Whoa, there's a typo. Big no-no. So now we're right in the beginning of the development cycle because we need to patch this uh, very big and business crucial error that we encountered. So let's take a look at the development environment and like in every good cooking um, movie I already identified the file that is causing this problem and it's here this HTML file so we'll go in here we'll apply this very complicated fix and save our code. Okay now that the code is fixed we can commit our changes and as you remember it is all um, pushed on GitHub so as a commit message we'll just enter update for demo and I will do commit and push Okay, the changes are made available on GitHub. Now let's go at our Jenkins environment. You can see here the build pipeline that uh, is prepared. We have the steps 0, 1, which is the code quality step where it does the uh, sonar checks and creates the war file. Here's 02 Ticket Monster Smoke Test, which just really starts up the application on the uh, OpenShift domain and checks if it is available. Then the deployment in the user acceptance test domain. Step 04 is just more or less a halt for uh, introducing the manual approval because this is the last one that is triggered automatically because the last one the deployment to the production environment that's one that's supposed to be done manually and not automatic because we still want to have our fingers on the time when the product or the product the yeah not the product uh, the application that we're developing is the really productionized deployed so as this is a virtual machine running on my local workstation, I was not able to enter a hook in GitHub to push my Jenkins. So what we have to do here is just we punch the run button for the pipeline to start. And uh, you can see the code quality stage started and we'll take a look at the console, what's happening. So he already downloaded or cloned it the source code and is now doing the sonar checks. So let's uh, take a little look what's happening here. So all is looking fine so far. Yep, 
and uh, it says here finish with success so he now triggers he did trigger the second stage and if you go on the pipeline you can see that here the stage 2 has been uh, initiated so we we'll look at the console here as well you can see that it's been triggered by the upstream project you can see that he is copying the artifacts created in the previous step and now he is deploying the WAR file onto OpenShift. So here again, let's uh, wait a few seconds until he's done. So successfully finished and again the next stage is triggered. Okay, as you can see, the approve step has been run as well and uh, waiting now for us. So it's time to take a look at what happened on OpenShift. We go on the applications view on OpenShift and do a little refresh. We see that we still have the one Ticket Monster, which is installed on the production domain, but also the ones that are for the smoke test and user acceptance test. So let's take a look at the one for user acceptance test. Let's go into the application, and by miracle, our typo has been fixed. So we can agree that the fix that we applied was successful. So we will go back to our Jenkins and just trigger the last stage of our pipeline, which will not only deploy onto the production domain of OpenShift, but will also remove the test deployments. So let's take a look and watch what's happening on the console output. Successful. So, going back to OpenShift, refreshing the applications view, and as expected, there's only just one ticket monster left, the one, the production domain. And if you take a look at the application, the arrow is fixed and life can go on. So I hope this gave you, gave you a little bit of uh, an inside view on how OpenShift could cooperate with Jenkins. Obviously, that was only a demo, not as sophisticated as it could get. I mean. I did miss out doing um, extensive mail informations because if the user acceptance test environment is ready, um, one would probably create an email or some kind of ticket for the user acceptance test guys to know that they have to start working. Um, I did save the time and did not implement a sophisticated uh, user and view concept because that's just regular Jenkins stuff which you hopefully trust that the system can handle. So I hope it was worth spending a few minutes with me and uh, stay tuned for the next things to come.